uh, um, fascism waxing as it has been in uh, recent months and years, especially recently, uh, that we have this uh, swine flu situation, which is going to cause martial law on um, on short order, uh, probably as early as next fall. Um, you know, there's, there's other situations that um, that the fascists, uh, the top dominant, um, financial dominant especially, also militant dominant, uh, also industrially dominant, um, the, the, the top of the chain of command, they really greatly seem to be enacting fascism globally. Um, especially uh, where there is a significant challenge to their authority because the people there are armed. Uh, as that includes the United States here, which um, is greatly fascist in, in recent years. But, um, I don't know, so I figured it was time by gas masks because they, uh, when they're trying to clear masses from the planet, they tend to lean towards biological, chemical, or nuclear weapons, and a gas mask is how you protect yourself from uh, that stuff. Uh, there's some chemical weapons that you need to also cover all your skin. Um, I don't know, there's some rain suits that I have that um, I would uh, button down real tight around uh, certain areas to seal it off if that uh, became a reality. Um, I might also use some duct tape uh, to seal off a rain suit um, as, a, as a CBR suit, chemical, biological, radiological uh, protection. In any case, um, I went to the store and I got myself this gas mask. Now, um, I'll go ahead and show you how to use this gas mask. Um, when you first get your gas mask, you want to go ahead and fit it. Um, when it comes time to put this on, you don't want to have to uh, adjust the top straps. You want to have the top straps adjusted uh, already to fit your head. Um, the bottom straps, uh, you will adjust them um, on you know at that moment. So, um, oh shit. okay. So um, well, the first thing you want to do is you want to put it on. You want to get all the straps pulled down tight. Um, then you cover the um, you cover the intake valve, uh, uh, and then you breathe in. to put this mask on because there's some uh, biological, uh, radiological, chemical hazard, then um, you don't want to have to um, you know, uh, question the, the fit of your mask or the integrity of the seal. You uh, should, at your fitting time, test the seal of the mask by, by, uh, by covering the intake and then breathing in, and you will see the mask collapse down onto your face. So the seal is good. Um, you should not only see it, but you should feel the whole mask pull in until uh, it can't go in any further, and then it shouldn't even be capable, or it shouldn't be possible to draw air further into your lungs. Uh, at that point, you should uh, you should hit a hard stop with your uh, with your breathe in, uh, because the seal is so tight. Okay, um, when it's time to put it on, what you have to do is you have to um, you have to break this little strap right here. Uh, you have to take the cap off, and and you have to uh, take the tab off the bottom of this. Uh, you want to leave this all sealed until it's time to put the mask on, because um, the charcoal in here it will go stale. Uh, there's uh, other like uh, the stuff that is in the air will um, very gradually uh, seep in, or very gra gradually if you break the seal, uh, it will go into the canister and it will um, it will deactivate the charcoal and make it less um, less capable of grabbing the, the pollutants out of the air. So um, once you get that all, um, once you get the uh, the cap off the top, um, get the seal off the bottom, you spin this on here uh, right onto the uh, you spin it onto uh, the air intake, and um, you, know, you might then again check the seal by uh, by doing a test with the with your hand against the bottom of the canister, uh, so as to make sure that with the canister in, you also have seal. Uh, it would be a shame if the canister had like you know, some hole in it, no seal. Um, uh, uh, so, so that um, it uh, it should also come with a uh, feeding tube, the the gas mask that you get. Um, so uh, how you uh, how you operate the feeding tube is you, you take, the, uh, take the cap off of the uh, feeding tube uh, nozzle on the side of the mask and then twist the feeding tube onto the mask and then you squeeze um, the, the two little clips on the center of the, of the feeding tube while what it is that you're about to consume, um, while you have the, the end of the straw dipped into what it is that you're about to consume. That is when you should pull the two handles or uh, pull the two clips on uh, on, the reading, on the feeding tube, and then um, you can uh, intake through the feeding tube. Uh, it will, of course, have to be liquid. Um, you know, if you have like hemp milk or uh, juice, or um, if you have a blender, you might blend down some spinach. Uh, that would be a quality meal inside your gas mask. Um, if you had some uh, very well blended, um, I don't know, purified or pureed even is really what you need to do with any type of food that you're going to um, bring into your gas mask. You need it to be very coldly liquid. Um, uh, you, know, you, um, you might even you know, just wait to eat and drink only water through your gas mask, maybe juice, uh, just keep it from um, being blocked up. It would be a, a crappy uh, situation to be in need of a gas mask and to have it um, 
or have your feeding tube blocked up because uh, you tried to uh, take something into the feeding tube that was not pureed. Um, now, when you uh, when you put the feeding tube on, uh, it won't be possible to get the, the the feeding tube on the inside in your mouth without. Um, what, what you have to do is uh, you grab the feeding tube on the outside of the mask and then you uh, twist it so that the tube on the inside is aimed at your mouth. So uh, you, you should then be able to reach forward uh, with your lips, your thumb, your teeth, and grab onto the feeding tube on the inside. Uh, it will definitely take though that you, um, that you give the mask a little bend so, um, uh, while handling the feeding tube. So you grab the feeding tube and, and you bend the tube towards, uh, towards your mouth. Grab the feeding tube on the outside and bend the tube towards your mouth on the inside. And then grab it with teeth. Pull it into your mouth and then you can suck through the straw. Um, I was doing some research on um, activated charcoal, and uh, all it takes to activate some charcoal is to um, is to burn as as dense a wood, so as um, as hard a wood, as thick a wood as uh, I don't know. So like oak, oak would be great for charcoal. Um, so you want a, a really um, a really solid wood, and uh, then you cook it inside an area where there's not so much wind sweeping through, so inside like a metal tub, um, like a, a tub from like a washing machine will do. Um, you know, so, so you have a fire pit with a metal uh, container um, with a hole in the bottom, uh, you have your charcoal inside um, inside that, that, uh, inside that container with a fire underneath it, and um, you wait until they're obvious uh, charcoals, what you have in there is wood, and uh, then uh, you take them out, you let it cool down, um, you know, probably you want to cover them uh, to uh, make them burn out faster, and uh, then you crush up the charcoal uh, so as to uh, get small um, you know, little bits of charcoal. You want it to be no bigger than the size of a peanut. Um, and I was thinking, um, if you were long-term enduring chemical, biological, radiological uh, environment, and you needed to wear your gas mask for longer than the canister will last, because the canister is only going to last for like six to eight hours, what you might do is uh, to drill a hole, um, to drill through this, you would need something like cobalt or um, or a um, you know, some type of drill bit that will go through metal, which you can get at um, you can get that at, like Home Depot stores or something like that. But um, if you were to drill a hole into here and then get the um, or get the activated or get the uh, charcoal that is spent out of it, um, that charcoal actually can be reused if you are to bake it at a high temperature. That will eliminate what uh, what in it is bad. Uh, so if it's like uh, swine flu all up in your charcoal, uh, so thick that the swine flu is now starting to come through because the charcoal can't, um, can't bind to it anymore because the charcoal is all bind, bound up on the rest of the swine flu, you already breathed through this thing, then, uh, you could bake that, uh, to eliminate the, uh, what it, what it is that is, um, uh, that has the, the charcoal at, a uh, this condition. Also, you could replace the charcoal. Uh, so you, you could get the charcoal out of here, bake that charcoal, put other charcoal in here, and then reuse the canister. Um, you would have to seal the canister, um, and it would have to be an absolute seal. So um, I don't know how you might do that. Uh, put glue all the way around, and uh, not even glue. You'd probably want to use epoxy, and uh, then put um, then put like a, a, a plastic uh, flat piece over the hole that you made. You know, something thick, something that's not gonna like. Uh, deform to pull into the hole, something like that, uh, and then test the seal of the canister after you replace the charcoal uh, by attaching it to your mask, and then uh, put your hand to the, uh, to the bottom of the canister to block off the air, and then breathe in and make sure that uh, you have a seal because the, the mask pulls in to, uh, towards your face. So, uh, I think that's about all there is to, uh, to using a, a gas mask and um, making a gas mask. Uh, Last, if um, you know, we get into a situation where industry is tanked and we're still being warred on by, by nuclear, biological, or chemical means, then you know, I think that um, that's pretty much all that it is that you should uh, have to know in order to survive those conditions. Uh, charcoal um, is actually good internally also uh, to clear contaminants out of you. Um, you know, there are monkeys that they come out of the, uh, they come out of the forest. Uh, to scavenge the fire pits of um, of the tribesmen that live uh, alongside the, the, the patch of forest, the monkeys uh, the, that the monkeys live in, and they um, they scavenge the fire pit for charcoal and they eat uh, the charcoal. They they actually uh, pick up the charred pieces of wood and they chew on them uh, so as to digest the charcoal, so as to uh, eradicate parasites and whatever it is that um, that they have consumed that is uh, that is injuring them. They have uh, over generations learned this and passed this on. Crazy as monkeys, <laughs> but um.